Hi guys, so in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the tricky C++ questions which HFT companies usually ask in their interviews. I mean, recently I've been studying a lot about what uh, recent interview trends are and what companies are actually asking in their interviews. HFT companies only for C++ developer roles and or low latency developer roles. And I came across a few tricky questions and uh, in this video, I'm going to share some of them. I mean, most of these questions require extensive knowledge of C++, but I'm going to try my best to explain it to you guys. So usually these kind of questions are fairly common in interviews. I mean, uh, what these questions are that they will give you a snippet of C++ code and they'll ask you like what will happen when this program is executed, whether it will be compile error or whether it will there will be a runtime error or whether there will be some output generated. And they, it's not just enough to answer like what would happen. You need to also explain like why this thing happened, like why there will be compile error or why there will be a runtime error. And I mean, these kind of questions appear both in online assessments and in uh, interviews as well, in personal interviews as well. And yeah, uh, usually you are expected to solve these questions very fast. Anyways, so the first question is this, like uh, you have a class A and it has a private member, which is uh, num underscore num and Class B is actually a friend of class A. So in case you do not understand what friend is, so friends, this is a concept of friends in C++ object oriented programming. So basically a class or a function can be a friend of another class. And if let's say in this case, if class B is a friend of class A, then what class B is capable is that it can actually access private members of class A. Usually private members are hidden from the outside world. I mean, outside the class, you cannot access the private members of a particular class, but in case someone is a friend of that class, that particular friend can actually access all the private members. So here is class B. It has a public method void fun function. And what it does basically is that it creates the object A and it will, it is just printing A dot the value stored in the underscore num member of A. And then it is setting the num to 10 and then it is printing it again. As you can see, like this is a private member, still B is able to access it. So here is int main we just create the object of b and we call b dot fun so in this case like this program will compile successfully and it will generate this output like if you say here that a dot we had created the object a on line 17 and we have printed the value of num i mean initially the value of num is zero so zero was printed and then we set the value to 10 and 10 was printed eventually but so this was fairly simple but here is a tricky part let's say we have this particular code as well where what we are doing is let me just copy paste it above so what we are doing here is that there is a class c and class c actually inherits from class b okay and class c also has a fun method an func method like class b had a fun method and it has func and what class c is trying to do is it is also trying to access the private members of class a and one might think that, okay, since class C inherits from class B and B is a friend of A, B is able to access private members of A. So C should also be able to access the private members of A, but that actually does not happen. The program will, you will face a compile error here. And you can also see that the error which you are getting is this, that this A num is actually a private, is actually private within this context. And this error is coming from the func method of class C only. So this is one thing to remember that friendship cannot be inherited. I mean, if class B is friend of class A, then B can definitely access the private members of class A. But if class C is inherits from class B, then it does not mean that class C can also uh, access the private members of class A. Okay, so friendship is not inherited. So this was the first question. The second question is this. Again, it's also based on object unit programming only there is this class A, it has a constructor and a destructor. In constructor, what you are doing is that you are actually just printing this that constructor was called and then you are throwing an exception. Okay. And here, what we are doing in the int main method is that we, uh, you can forget about this, maybe unused attribute. Okay. And so what may be unused attribute says that, uh, the particular, I mean, if it is, if you find its keywords declaration before the declaration or definition of any variable, it says that this variable might be unused after this line. Okay. So this attribute is for that only. And uh, we basically create the uh, object of class A here on line 23. And we have this in try catch block, like in catch block, we are 
catching the exception, std exception. And as you saw that in constructor, we were throwing the std runtime error. So runtime error actually inherits from std exception class. So we should be able to catch it here. So again, the question is that what would happen in this case? Is it even valid to throw exception from constructor? I mean, whether this will be a compiler error or some runtime error will be generated and your program will crash or it would simply or the program would successfully compile and done and it would just print like we are calling e dot what here so what this this what method actually prints this string so whether this string will be printed so the answer here is that uh, this program will compile and done successfully there will be no runtime error because like even though you are throwing a runtime error exception we you are catching the exception here and logging the exception so the program will successfully compile and run and this exception this particular sentence on line 12 runtime error in constructor a will be printed on the terminal and it is also fairly valid to throw uh, exceptions from constructors because the thing is that uh, like constructors whenever you create an object or instant basically instantiate an object of some particular class the constructor is the first method which is called and let's say during the initialization of data members something failed so constructor does not have any return type it cannot return any values so you cannot uh, basically tell the caller or the client who actually instantiated the object that the constructor failed. There is no way to tell it like you cannot return any error code or like false or something. So that's why we throw exceptions from constructor telling that exceptions basically are thrown in the scenarios where the initialization of the object failed where you were maybe you were unable to initialize some particular data member. Okay, so this is a fairly valid practice and if even if I run this program, you will see that the program will successfully compile. It compiled successfully. You can see that the constructor was called and eventually this line was logged. Runtime error in constructor A, which is coming from line 25. Now let's do something interesting. Let's comment it out and let's throw the exception from destructor. So what would happen in this case, whether this program will like whether this the compilation would fail or you will see some runtime error or again the pro or would the program again compile and run successfully the answer here is that your program will actually uh, crash here so what would happen that uh, basically throwing exceptions from destructor is not uh, allowed in c++ i mean destructors by default are no except you can also see a warning here that uh, you can yeah you can see here that in c++ from c++ 11 destructors default to no except and you cannot throw any exceptions from no except methods the methods which are marked as no except if you throw those exceptions std terminate will be called and uh, you can see here your program will crash i mean std terminate is called you can see that terminate was called i mean this destructor a was printed here and eventually when you throw through the exception the exception was not caught by this catch it wasn't caught uh, the terminate std terminate was called and you can read about on S about std terminate on scpp reference uh, but again the thing is this only that your program basically crashed okay and yeah do remember that throwing exceptions from destructor is not valid okay uh, the other now the next question is again based on object oriented programming again a simple question we have a class it has a public method void f and it just prints this method just prints that a function was called there's this class b which inherits from class a and it again has this f method which prints b fun was called okay then you have class c which inherits from b and the f method here is actually virtual and we are printing here that c function was called and then there is this class d which is pub, which inherits from c and then there is this f method here as well which prints d function was called okay so basically uh, there is a multi-level inheritance like uh, D inherits from C, C inherits from B and B inherits from A. So uh, the main method what it does is this, that there is this D object, you created a D object. Then you have a, you basically store the value of this D object. I mean, you basically have a reference to this D object and the type of this reference is A and you call A dot F. We also created another reference, which is of type B and, and uh, we store the reference to D here and we call B.F. Similarly for C, we created another reference to D and we call C.F and then eventually we call D.F. So what should be printed? Now one might think that uh, C has a virtual method. So this might complicate things like maybe uh, like C has a virtual method and D is actually inheriting from C. 
right and the function f which is virtual in c so basically this f is common in all the classes a b c d so one might think that in all these scenarios maybe d func this particular line will be uh, printed or so what would eventually happen is that uh, since this f method is not virtual in class a and b so when you call this line on line number 39 and line number 42 the corresponding a function this f method of class a will be called for line number 42 the f method of class b will be called but when for c c has a virtual method and d is inheriting from c so in that case the d method would be called here the f f method of class d will be called and on line number 47 as well the f method of class d will be called if we run this and see the output it generated it would be this only a function was called then b function d function d function so for class a and class b their corresponding functions were called sorry for references of a and for reference types a and b the corresponding a b methods were called even when those reference were actually pointing to the class d object but for c the d function was called so this is again one thing to remember or it's not actually required to remember it is fairly simple to understand that this even though this f method is common in all the classes it is not virtual in class a and class b it is only virtual from c that's why this happened now the other question is this again there is this class a it has a private member underscore num there is a setter method set num you pass some argument to it and the num met, uh, member will be set to that particular value and there is a getter method which just returns the num so we have we created an a uh, object of class a we are printing the value stored in getnum so initially the value stored in getnum is 0 as you can see on line number 7 then we call setnum which where we are passing the value as 10 and we print this a dot getnum again so you will see that the output is as expected i mean initially the value was 0 so 0 was printed and then on line number 20 we set the value as 10 and so 10 was printed now let's do something interesting here let's actually make this set num method const now the property of const member methods is that it does not allow you to modify the uh, data members okay if you run this program it would give you compile error so as you can see it is giving you compile error it is saying that on line number 10 assignment of member a num in read only object this is read only object because like the set num is actually a const method so it becomes read only now if I ask you that even though my set num is const I want to modify this underscore num member uh, variable how can we do this so there are a couple of methods to do this like one is you can use this mutable uh, storage qualifier so if you make any data member mutable then it means that you can basically modify that in const methods and if you run this program this will compile fine and you see that the output is printed again this like initial it was 0 then we did 10. There's another method to do, uh, another way to do this. You can remove this mutable and you can modify the set num method like this. Uh, you take the value which you want to set and then you, you also take the pointer to the variable in which you want to set the variable, okay? So what you can do here is this, you can do this. Set, you can dereference the pointer and set it to uh, whatever argument you passed in num. And while setting the num, you can do this, that you pass the value of uh, a dot underscore num we can make this underscore num public here so you can do this if you r run the program now you will see that you get the same output again so even though our set num method is const we are able to modify the member variable data member num so this actually is only for knowledge purposes like you should never do this in production code this is a very bad practice and usually hfts ask this question only to check whether you are aware of good and bad practices in programming so that was all i had for this particular video thank you guys for watching please do not forget to like subscribe and comment and i'll see you all next time